Bismillah Rahman Rahim, uh, now we are going to look at the last segment of our mechokinetics uh, where we are going to look at the excretion. Although we have covered the uh, different topics uh, regarding the intestine, uh, where we have seen in the drug was moving, then the blood vessel, first type of the absorption, then we have discussed the distribution. So we have covered the, uh, the metabolism. Now we are actually going for this last segment that is our the the excretion so now before i go to detail of uh, different terminologies and the explanation for the that the some term you should be clear elimination excretion and the clearance so if you have are confused with these term three term so you might be uh, find little bit difficult in the explanation so what what is elimination? What is excretion? When uh, someone asks, so the most of the students say these are same thing, but these are not same thing. These are different. Elimination. Let's look at elimination. Elimination is simply disappearance of active uh, molecule from the site of action, blood stream, and the body. And what is excretion? Removal of drug outside the body via renal or non-renal route. Okay, let's see what uh, what is difference in the elimination and excretion. So, in simple term, uh, it's I define like that. Elimination is actually combination of metabolism and excretion. So, we in the elimination we actually want the termination of action. For the termination of action, we should disappear those active molecule from the site of action from the blood stream from the body. So. For this purpose, first we metabolize the drug uh, by making the hydrophilic, so because it's easier for the excretion. So second thing, then we go for the excretion. So in the elimination, our concern with the action. So if the action is terminated, mean drug is eliminated. But the excretion is what is simply removal of drug uh, outside the body, which you can say irreversible. Okay, we are renal and non renal. Major organ is because the, for the excretion is the uh, kidney, other are also important that are the nerve root. Okay, hepatic water, battery, especially saliva, lung, so these are nerve So then, if some drug, uh, some drug which have, have no metabolism, for example, the lithium, which has no metabolism, so in, in those cases, uh, the elimination should be equal to the excretion. Okay, very straightforward. What is clearance? Clearance is actually volume of plasma completely cleared of the drug per unit time. How much uh, mean volume of drug you have cleared in the in the unit time? For example, if you have cleared the you know, two liter, where uh, what was the concentration of drug? That doesn't matter. But if you have, for example, two liters cleared, where uh, for example you have hundred mg per liter is uh, in the concentration so uh, the amount of the what is the uh, if the two liters cleared mean you are uh, it's a concentration is 100 mg or 50 mg doesn't matter so what is the concentration is that liter was has been cleared so how many hours it take so that's important in the clear so we come back to the all these explanation so we simply use this formula for the clear and the rate of elimination of drug and the over the drug uh, plasma drug concentration mean how much amount of drug has been cleared out of the kidney and how much uh, drug is remain um, in the your acetyl plasma so another formula which we use is the clearance is equal to volume of distribution multiplied by the clearance uh, kinetics so it's uh, depend on the different factor okay so or we can change like this uh, the this clearance kinetics is uh, clearance over the volume of distribution okay now the drug elimination rate uh, is this thing is the actual amount of drug cleared from the blood per unit time now let's look at the excretion because our uh, job is for the elimination we have covered the metabolism so we go for the excretion so excretion excretion what is our goal our goal is uh, to terminate the terminate the action so for the termination of 
this section we might uh, let's see okay for the termination of action uh, is from uh, from the body to the external environment so this is even a simple definition so our goal is that so what is the uh, site where the, the excretion can occur is the majorly the, is the kidney so we call them the renal so we look at the different factor which affect in the renal excretion what are the other factor which affect uh, where the which we consider them the non renal so like uh, the lungs uh, your lungs saliva so these are different example where you can see they are accurate we come back to one by one each of them so first we go for the renal okay so number one factor number one which is affecting the physiochemical property of drug in where we actually uh, look at the two things number one is the molecular size if the molecular size of drug is uh, mean larger than the your uh, pore of your glomerulus of the kidney so uh, of nephron you can say so then this drug cannot filter the second thing is the bending characteristic if there is bound form so for example um, uh, it make the uh, size larger so they are also not filtered so their half life will be longer because they are not filtered they are uh, mean it's difficulty for their excretion so their half life will be increased with free drug which is better for the absorption although this concept we have somehow covered in the absorption so urinary ph as you know better if it's a weak acid opposite medium uh, is weak with so opposite medium uh, is important for the excretion so if it's a weak acid so uh, ph should be basic okay if it's a weak uh, base then we go for the uh, the acidic drug drug interaction which is important because uh, it's important uh, especially in the excretion where you see the competition for the excretion of di different drug so we look back later and the blood flow because it defines your gfr so okay so and the the disease setting if you are uh, the the kidney is in the disease condition mean renal is dysfunction means your drug will be remain for the longer period is not properly excreted so we need to think about that the especially those which are totally dependent upon the renal uh, the renal excretion biological factor so these are uh, what are these factors we cannot change for example the facts this is the if you look at the male versus female in the female there is 10% lower renal excretion as compared to male so and if you adult especially adult which is 30 to uh, 40% if uh, in the newborn this excretion is lower as compared to the adult so in the clinical point these two people are very uh, confusing people one is the the baby new neonates other the, are the pregnant women lot of problem uh, coming from for these cases the other thing is the old age because in the old age uh, their excretion is slow because uh, because of their blood flow and their different other problems so then in those cases their pro uh, their half life will be lo longer so so mean they if uh, they, uh, they drug remain for longer period mean one cause is the uh, duration of action will be increased but the other fact is it may lead to toxicity so because the reason is they, their gfr and uh, and impaired tubular function which is secretion and absorption okay now let's look at the, this important fact that is the half life although you are familiar with this stuff it's actually it's a time mm, it's a time to uh, required to reduce the plasma concentration of 50% of initial in, initial concentration so it's a time actually simple so for example if you look at uh, if a drug has 50 mg uh, 500 mg after the for example its half life is 2 hour after the 2 hour what will happen uh, it's going to be 250 mg after the next 2 hour it's become 125 so after every 2 hour uh, its concentration is going to half of that so that is actually half life okay 
So elimination is actually of two types. One is the distribution elimination, uh, and the other is uh, sorry half life is of two types. One is the distribution, other is elimination. Distribution means when we uh, our drug has been absorbed. Uh, or uh, other case, for example, in intravenous where is no absorption. So on those case after the distribution, uh, the if your drug concentration goes uh, mean as you absorb and after the distribution concentration is become 50 percent of initial concentration. So that is actually a distribution. But the elimination is different thing when drug is coming out. So let's look at our concern with the elimination. Okay. So uh, for the how many. Uh, after, for example, if you look at the how many uh, half life are being used for the elimination. After the our first half life, the drug concentration becomes zero percent. Uh, is, uh, mean at the zero time is zero eliminated. After one, it's become fifty. So after the the two, it's become seventy five. Okay. So after the next third, it uh, eighty seven point five is excreted. After the fourth. It is the because every time it's fifty percent is going to be excreted after. So if you see, uh, almost five half life has been used for this. So I simply uh, say the student just remember the rule of five. Rule of five says what? It's a uh, four to five half life has been needed to eliminate. If you are giving no further drug, if you are giving further drug, mean it's going to be. Uh, uh, go for the steady suggestion which also take four to five half life. Okay, so let's uh, look at the uh, the uh, half life which is actually for the calculation we go for the zero point seven. Why we are using uh, zero point seven because it's actually the log. Uh, of if you uh, take the logarithm of the fifty. Uh, 50 percent that's going to be a 0 0.693 almost so that's why round about it's 0 0.7 okay so it's elimination half life so a other formula we can use uh, because k is actually equal to the your uh, clearance over vd so we also use this formula k is given uh, half life one of the important factors over the kinetic so the first order kinetics, which is confusing for the many students, and the zero order kinetics. Uh, first order is simply the constant fraction of the drug uh, that is being eliminated per unit time, and while the is the, the zero order is constant amount of drug that is being eliminated per unit time. So just look at the constant fraction is the first, and the way the constant amount is in the your zero order. So what does mean fraction? For example, if I mention if uh, some drug has 50 percent, uh, half of that is going to be eliminated uh, for after one hour or two hour, one hour. So mean uh, other is I'm saying that uh, for example 20 mg is going to be eliminated per unit time. So there are two different things. What is happening? Let's uh, here just look at the example here. For example, cost fraction is 50 percent while constant amount is 20 mg. Let's see. We have 100 mg. After one hour, what is going to happen? It's going to be 50 mg. After the next one hour, it's going to 25. So constant fraction is going to mean 50% of your amount is going to be excreted after each hour. Okay, 12.5, 6.25. If you uh, compare with the, if I say the cost amount is going to be excreted, like 100 mg. After one hour, what will happen? It's going to be 80 mg. Next hour, 60 mg. Only 20 mg is going to be excreted. After one hour, 40 mg. 20 mg. So this is pattern is followed. Okay. So you can see uh, if I change the uh, drug, what will happen? For example, if I go for the 160, what will happen? Our concentration will be 80. 50 percent is going to be excreted. After next hour, 40, 20, 10 mg. So if you look at the uh, here, just uh, you can see uh, the 10 and uh, the 6.5 it's quite uh, relevant it's uh, not my difference okay if you uh, if you apply this for the constant amount for example 160 mg so what will happen 1 hour 140 mg uh, 120 mg so like that so you can see still after at this time we have 80 mg which is much different from the 20 mg so you can say uh, in this case uh, although if you change the concentration, 
your amount is lim uh, fixed 20 MD will be exceed. But if you here in this case, if you change from 100 to 160, what will happen? In this case, it was excreted after one hour was the 50. In this case, 80 has been excreted out. So you can say it's uh, uh, you can say concentration dependent while it's a concentration independent. So if you change the concentration, so okay. So let's say rate of elimination is directly proportional to plasma concentration of when the rate of uh, elimination is the independent of plasma concentration of drug. Okay. So in, uh, so these uh, condition can lead to toxicity. For example, alcohol. Uh, if someone has taken alcohol for uh, a longer dose, uh, high dose of the alcohol. What will happen? It's uh, um, may may show its uh, action for longer period because uh, for two three days because they the constant amount is going to be excreted. They follow the zero order kinetics. Okay, so just uh, if we, uh, for the mnemonic, I use the F first order fraction, first order fraction. Okay, so but important thing is most of drug follow the first order kinetic so we don't confuse with that but some uh, like alcohol they follow the zero here is a mnemonic uh, for the some example which are uh, you must need to know because they are tested uh, the zero watt power it's a mnemonic to the limited drug which follow the warfarin alcohol and aspirin a represent uh, zero watt power uh, w represent warfarin a represent alcohol and aspirin t represent thiophylline and next is we will turn beta mite and the p power represent actually phenotype so these uh, four uh, i think uh, four five drug uh, five six are follow the zero order kinetic so but uh, most of the drug follow the uh, first order okay so if you look at the graphical representation you can see here uh, it was one at this time after the first half like uh, it's become 0 0.5 then it's become 0 .5. Uh, 2, 5 and 0 0.1. If you compare with the, in this case, in the zero order, uh, I think uh, if it's uh, 30, 40, so it might be a 35, you can say 5 MD is going to be excreted each time here. So what is important? Important thing is that its graph is the, here is graph is linear, okay? It's a linear graph, but it's, it's a non-linear, you can see a curve-like structure. So it's a non-linear graph. Okay. Now check at the clearance. Clearance, I mentioned volume of plasma cleared per unit rate of elimination uh, of drug and the plasma drug consumption. Simply look at it. So clearance is actually renal and clearance always and other non-renal is also included when you see the total body clearance. Okay, let's see. For example, here, here to here. So if you look at here. You can see uh, the amount has been plasma uh, drug has come in from the plasma and enter into the kidney, so then it's eliminated. So we check out how my drug is remained subtly in the plasma and how my drug has been eliminated out of the uh, the kidney. So that's where the rate of elimination of drug, how much uh, drug has been eliminated, other is uh, what, what is the concentration of drug which is still in the plasma. So we check out the clearance like that. So if you have cardiac problem or hepatic or renal, if a cardiac problem means your blood flow is coming less. If it is a hepatic problem, metabolism is affected, renal dysfunction mean uh, then excretion will be affected. So all these factors affect the clearance, so which go for the adverse effect means your drug is still in the uh, body, so it can cause the adverse effect. So, in plasma drug concentration, we cannot do anything. What is rate of elimination of drug is dependent over the GFR, uh, mean the, and the glomerular filtration rate and the active secretion minus the reabsorption. So these are actually factor um, because the GFR filter, filtration uh, and the secretion is go for the excretion while the reabsorption is mean it's coming back to the body. So. Those drugs which uh, you know better normally, uh, normally GFR is 125 ml per uh, minute uh, or 120. So how we check uh, the patient GFR by simply given the inulin or creatinine because they have uh, no no uh, secretion and reabsorption. So that's why the active secre uh, mean active secretion is zero mean reabsorption is zero. So GFR will be equal to elimination. So 
mean we can simply calculate like that uh, the elimination of this inulin or the creatinine so we can check out the uh, GFR you know better in the physiology if you, if you have an idea so let's uh, before we go to the rate of elimination so just recall your mind I'm not going to explain all this because we have covered in the absorption but some concept you must uh, clear recall your mind so number one is the uh, what are the factor for the elimination medium should be opposite okay for the drug if it is weak it should be acidic if it is weak acid the uh, medium should be basic and the other thing is the ionized form and the hydrophilic so these are component which help for the hydrophilic which we have uh, achieved by the metabolism okay so other thing you must need to know although you know unionized is going to absorb ionized go for the elimination so what is important important thing is the 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 term the protonated and unprotonated i have uh, noticed many of the students are still confused the protonated unprotonated simply if it's an acidic medium means your drug should be always protonated form whether it's acidic or basic doesn't matter because why because you know where uh, they, uh, they have power to donate the hydrogen ion so that's why they donate the hydrogen ion means they are protonated so if it's the acidic if you have seen the drug is in the acidic medium uh, if it uh, would be a base that's opposite medium for the base so protonated form of the uh, you can say the base uh, basic medium uh, mean a weak base drug is better for the excretion while the unprotonated form of the uh, the unprotonated form of the uh, the weak acid is better for the elimination other thing if you see here uh, protonated in the weak base it's a uh, cation you can see the positive ion is here cation t t t is look like uh, positive and the here is the anion so it's uh, uh, for the el uh, elimination so we We'll go for them. So important thing: non-ionized and ionized. Non-ionized form go for the uh, active uh, secretion as well as they reabsorb. But the ionized form, they are trapped, so they are filtered. So although we have covered the, I think, acidic and drug uh, basic drug poisoning. So simple: if it's a poisoning, go for the uh, change the simply a pH of urine, so you can get. So I'm not going to explain because we have covered that in the absorption already. Okay, so let's look at the rate of elimination, which is dependent upon the GFR, the glomerulus filtration rate. So first look at this. This first arrow. What are the factor which are uh, what type of drug which can enter into the your glomerulus? Okay. So filtered and non-filtered drug. So I recommend just um, uh, understand what um, what type of drug that are not going to be filter the number one is if it's a bound with the plasma protein if it's a molecular size is or to more than uh, larger for example to more than 20000 you can say so it cannot cross the the pores of glomerulus so it cannot come into the filter but if you are thinking the all other kind for example if it's a free drug it's a ionized or the smaller molecular size non ionized whatever Hydrophilic lipo, all drug can be filtered here, so they can enter into the your uh, main um, the tubular system. Okay, so but uh, if you uh, the the this actually defines uh, your GFR. So if only free drug is coming, so I will let's look at it later. Free drug, free drug, uh, all if it's a bound, it's not. So that's why we sometimes calculate the clearance like that. Free drug multiplied by the GFR, so it's a calculation for the clearance. So because only free drug come out of the excretion metal. So other thing, the second is step is our the the active secretion. So active secretion. So your anion and cation, uh, different anion and cation are going to be secreted. Mean they are going to enter into the tubular system. So coming out of the uh, plasma or you can say blood vessel so enter so as i mentioned what is important in which i has mentioned unprotonated drug a weak acid drug so they are anion while the protonated form of the weak bases they are the cations so they can come into the uh, the renal tubule okay
but as i mentioned the premature infants and new nets they are complicated people so in they incompletely develop the tubular uh, system secretory mechanism so that's why they are drug retained in the blood mean they are not going to properly uh, secreted in the uh, the renal tubule so they are complicated people the other thing uh, this is low specificity if this uh, mean uh, it's if it's anion and ketene it's good that going to be secreted but there is competition for the different anion and different ketene so one of important fact that is the uh, for example a patient come into clinic okay so uh, not in clinic he is what he has done already he was the arthritis patient so he is in the many years he has a joint pain for the uh, pain relief analgesia he take the aspirin what what the, his severely pain has been increased what is mechanism the actually your aspirin and the uh, uric acid compete for the excretion uh, in the actually at the secretion point so they compete if the aspirin is present mean your uric acid is going back to the your blood as they go back to the blood they go to the joints they are going to increase the uh, pain because they are going to be deposited in the your joints if it's uh, too much is can lead to gout so instead of uh, taking his pain relief drug he has done what he has done he has increased the pain because of this mistake okay so there is competition for different drug so for example aspirin and uric acid so we should be careful regarding different condition okay the, the next stage is the reabsorption although it's a physiology part so uh, i am explaining what here so the unionized and lipophilic if it's unionized and lipophilic as i mentioned they are best for the absorption so they go back crossing the membrane they go back in the distal tubule so what is that's why if uh, if i mentioned here so this drug was this arrow was entering go for the excretion this secretion so these two uh, here these arrows are actually going for the excretion so that's why i am added them while this uh, the unionized lipophilic has gone back okay so if you look at this filtered list free drug some other drug hydrophilic are ionized they are going for the excretion while this non ionized and lipophilic this last two member was has been come back to the blood so they still remain in the blood until they are becoming ionized and the hydrophilic so only the ionized form and hydrophilic can be excreted so this is uh, regarding the the all about the renal now let's look at the non renal excretion so non renal especially one is important for the battery room some drug and their metabolite actively excreted into the bile so for example the ampicillin and rifampicin so they use the battery room so some drug undergo the entire hepatic uh, circulation so oral for example oral control what is the entire hepatic circulation entire mean hepatic mean liver entire mean your uh, gastric tract so g it when entire hepatic mean your drug is circulated from liver to intestine intestine to liver liver to intestine so if you look at here so mean your drug is coming from uh, for first it has been absorbed and go to the liver first metabolize after this what is happen this drug has come out of the battery root and to the again come back to the the your uh, the duodenum part or you can say so again what is happened here so uh, here it was by the liver is has been conjugated by the metabolism now by the your gut flora or you can say the normal bacteria which is living in the kidney so they unconjugated as they unconjugated mean it's again available for the absorption so they go back and again and again so they remain for the longer period so that's why our contraceptive have the somehow longer half life okay so this was the, some major route if you look at the some other route like saliva which uh, some drug like phenytoin is excreted by that the sweat is also route of excretion for example the cervical is lead so and the uh, lungs you know better for the for example gas anesthetic so and um, if someone has taken uh, that abuse i mean alcohol and saying 
so if someone has taken the alcohol so there can be uh, smelled out because the one of root of the excretion for the uh, the alcohol is also lung gas anesthetic is a good example so breast milk so by the breast milk so mean it can go to the baby so for you know, amyloid or any aspirin so should, we should be careful I, as i mentioned so the pregnant woman are, uh, women are the very complicated people and if you are pregnant and the lactating so they should be careful regarding that taking different drug neonates pregnant lactating oh people no this this uh, pharmacodynamics is uh, is our next topic so thank you our lecture is over for the pharmacokinetics thank you very much allah